clear to this point that there are a lot of tools that help with selection. We're going to add two more to the ones we talked about. One of these is the Magic Wand tool. This tool helps us to select areas in a photo with similar colors. If we decide that we want to select the blue in this photo, we click just once with this tool, and Photoshop will try to select as best as possible the blue in this photo. The problem is, is that this tool doesn't do a very good job. Another tool, though, that does a similar job, but with excellent results, is called Color Range. It's a unique tool with which you can select different colors and shades, but instead of the software deciding what is best for you, you choose it manually. It works on the principle of choosing the colors that you specify. It has different color palettes for ease of reference. By clicking Select, you have the option to choose between sampled colors, i.e. the colors you choose, and below this, you have additional color choices as well. You can choose from light, medium, and dark colors. If you have people in the photo, you can try to select them using this option, which allows you to select by skin tone. Whether the person is lighter or darker, Photoshop does a great job and produces pretty good results when selecting this option. You can also choose the Out of Gamut option, but for now, we'll pick the most common one, which is Sampled Colors. The fuzziness slider is an option that allows you to choose how soft or hard the boundaries of your selection will be. Let's say we want to select the blue color in this image. By clicking once, we can add or remove these pipettes. You can see here that it successfully selects this area here, but areas such as those farther from the point we clicked on remain poorly selected. That's when the Range option may come in handy. This option allows us to show Photoshop how far from this point we can select colors that are similar to this. And if I want to add some other nuance, we hold down Shift and select this pipette to add to our selection. If you think the yellow area also has some of the blue in it, you can remove it by selecting this minus and clicking here to tell Photoshop, I want all those colors, except this one and this one and this one, etc. When you're done, click OK to see what a great job Photoshop has done for you. The next thing you can do when you have a selection is to soften it. This is to ensure that the edges that separate the blue from the yellow, in this case, are not too rigid. Let me show you what this is all about. If we put blue in a single layer without adding any selection softening, something like this will be the result. I'll hit Ctrl and J to duplicate the selected area, and you can clearly see how that area has been selected appears in a separate layer. I then can turn off the bottom one to see what I did and see the results of Photoshop's algorithms. But see how sharp and rough these edges are? To avoid this, we can soften the selection or feather the edges. When I have a half-empty layer like this one, I don't want to go back and do everything again, so the only thing I can do is subtract a selection of these colors. How is that? This is done by holding down Control and clicking on the layer window. This selects what's in the layer. I'll exclude this layer so I can mark the same colors, this time with a soft selection so that we can make a comparison. I come down here and go to Select, Modify, then Feather. With this option, you let Photoshop know how many pixels of width to soften your selection. Just like with the hardness of the brush, when it's firm, it leaves more firm edges, and when it's softer, it leaves softer edges, the difference being our choices. What we will introduce here depends on us and the quality of the photo. The better the quality, the greater the number here. In this case, I'll type 2 and click OK. Now, if I copy the selection to a new layer and hit Ctrl and J, you can see how much softer the borders are and how much harder they are here. 
Let's make some changes to see what this is all about. If I select it and I click OK, then there are no edges left over from the selection. Let's do the same thing, but this time on the layer without the soft end borders. As you can see, this layer, without the soft end selection, remains with quite visible edges in some places. To avoid these hard edges, we can use Feather to soften our selections.